Right now, it is a time uh, that we are joined by Brian Ross uh, and Real News. Uh, Brian joins us every week at this time, and we take a look at uh, stories that uh, are going on, not only here, but in the world. What a busy time, Brian. Right, and the story that didn't happen, the red wave. You know, I have to laugh, uh, Brian. I don't know. I was watching uh, Bill Maher a while ago, and uh, he had uh, Moron, uh, the guy that uh, is uh, the very progressive Democrat and has a lot of... And and he said, this was probably over a month ago, I think this is all hogwash. I think you can't uh, count on the polls. He said, I think the Democrats are going to do okay. Uh, they will lose some seats in the Congress, but I think they'll hold... I think they'll hold uh, the Senate, uh, and I just don't believe all this red wave stuff. And uh, son of a gun, he turned out right once again. Uh, uh, pollsters uh, and politicians had it wrong. Well, exactly, and uh, the politicians, of course, are banging on the pollsters, who did not somehow account for the, uh, the gender gap. Huge numbers of women uh, made their voices heard at the polls. Uh, it surprised many people, and the old uh, sort of uh, uh, sort of trademark uh, turned out uh, you know didn't happen somehow the Democrats had a better ground game than the Republicans. Uh, I think the Democrats lost some important some some important seats, but they've kept things close enough in the House. Well, they're going to have Republicans fighting amongst themselves. Uh, the bad thing about what's what's going on here is that uh, we're going to have no doubt about it two years of not much happening. Except maybe a budget passed. That's uh, I don't I don't think anything else can happen. I think there'll be gridlock in Congress. Um, and he would say that's not such a bad thing. Better than a uh, a runaway one side or the other. Uh, the Wall Street thought the Republicans were going to prevail. They were disappointed. You could see it in the stock prices dropping yesterday. But as you say, there's drama now inside the Republican Party. You thought the Democrats were in disarray. Uh, the uh, the Freedom uh, Caucus there in the Republican Party uh, is fighting against the potential speaker, uh, Kevin McCarthy, trying to figure out a way that either they get a lot of uh, key committee assignments from him and leadership posts, or they may not vote for him. And it's, you know, they're, and they're actually uh, huddling with uh, Tucker Carlson and, frankly, Donald Trump. That's sort of the, uh, uh, at the moment, uh, the, the strife in the Republican Party is pretty deep. I think uh, the the person that had the best day was Ron DeSantis. I mean, really now, he is in a prime position to take on Donald Trump. Uh, uh, Donald Trump uh, unwrapped uh, the disdain that the has between the two of them a couple of weeks ago. And, uh, and now Ron DeSantis really uh, has positioned himself very well heading into the next two years. Without a doubt, you can tell what Mr. Rupert Murdoch thinks about all of this. Uh, one of the front page uh, post headlines was The Future, the picture of DeSantis. And then the other front page was a picture of uh, Trump called Toxic Don. Toxic Don. It's going to be it's going to be very interesting to see what happens. Uh, 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 and I've said all along, uh, if if Republicans gain control of uh, of Congress, there was no way that he was going. I don't think I think everybody plays him for a fool, the Republican, uh, and I don't I don't think there's any way he'll become uh, the leader in the Congress. I just. Uh, you could see it coming. Uh, pe things backfire on him all the time. All the time. Well, and you know, if you look at what the Republicans, at least on the, on the far right, what they really want is an investigation of Hunter Biden. Uh, is that any way, uh, is, that, is that governing? I mean, that's, I guess that's something they can demand. And there's enough smoke there that, you know, somebody should be looking at it. But still, is that, is that their biggest priority, is investigating Hunter Biden? Yeah. With all that's going on in this country, that's that's the, what they think is most important. I guess so. And the three Senate races that are left, the Democrats have to win two, and one they are going to win. The one in Arizona, uh, they're going to win that a Senate race. Uh, and Georgia is going to be very interesting to see what happens because if the Democrats can maintain that fifty-fifty control, uh, Joe Biden has been appointing judges at an amazing pace. And if they may maintain that control, he'll be able to do that for the next two years, uh, putting that's judges. Exactly right. And yep. that's 
right now, uh, that's one of the most important things uh, for the Democrats uh, to look at and do is uh, is appoint as many judges as possible, uh, like Donald Trump did. Donald Trump did an outstanding job uh, for for his side and, and the number of uh, judges he got appointed. The other thing to look at closely is you know the threats by Kevin McCarthy that. Uh, for Ukraine, uh, there'd be no more blank check, as he called it. I don't think they got a blank check, but uh, he's certainly saying that they may put the brakes on the uh, funding and the support for Ukraine as they fight with Russia. Uh, and I see already a group of uh, Ukrainians uh, are coming to meet with uh, members of the Congress on both sides of the aisle. Uh, it'd be a shame if that was called into question, but I, I think it will be. And there may be reason for it to be at least, you know, aired out, I think. Uh, but that's that's the other thing that I think deserves a close look, is what are the Republicans, if they gain either control of the House or the Senate, which one of them seems very likely, uh, what would they do about Ukraine? Well, if they gain control of just the House, uh, it's going to be a mixed enough bag, and it's going to be close enough, uh, a difference of about, I think, 12 or 13 instead of the 50 that they thought. Uh, I think they'll have people on their own party that will, that will uh, vote. It'll, it might be a little less money per clip, uh, but I think that there's enough pressure will be put on Republicans, uh, some to flee that, uh, let's dump it completely. So I, I, I think I, I think there might be less money, but I think you're right. It, it'll be brought up before Congress. There's nothing wrong with that, and we'll we'll see where it goes. Hopefully it doesn't go to, to abandoning uh, an ally that now uh, is in a very good position. Right, and of course, one of the great powers of the Speaker or of the Senate Majority Leader is the ability uh, to whether or not to schedule votes on issues so they can control uh, what goes to the floor, no matter what the votes there might be. And that's the real power, how, how you control the, the flow of proposed legislation and needed legislation, like the debt ceiling and uh, you know, support for the military and support, frankly, for Ukraine. Getting back to Ukraine, uh, just amazing, uh, amazing heading into the winter. Uh, Russia is pulling troops uh, out of the main city uh, across the river uh, and leaving Kherson, which is the which is the city, the only major capital that they that they captured in the war, and which is part of the area which Russia just claimed as their territory. Uh, but the other real big story going along with that, and this is this is the sad part of war, and it's even sadder this time. Uh, the U.S. and Great Britain estimate that a hundred thousand lives have been lost by military personnel on each side in the Ukraine war. That's 200,000 people. Exactly, and that's that's the price of this folly by Putin, who apparently has finally gone along with the orders to pull out of that city, Kherson, as you say, across the river going to the east uh, in, in advance, I guess, of the winter season, which can slow down the, uh, the attacks either way. Uh, but just think about that, you know, those are the military lives lost. How about the civilian lives and the disruption of that country? Uh, you know, no good has come of this whatsoever, other than exposing the, the Russian military to be a paper tiger and Putin to be, uh, you know, not out of his mind, but, you know, he's so self-absorbed to launch this folly. Uh, the paper tiger uh, analysis is, is, is so accurate and uh it, it will be interesting to see over the next several years uh, how Russia deals with this. Russia really has only one major selling point as a country, and that's natural gas. That's it. I mean, they're the world's largest gas station. Uh, and now that now we see that their military, except for their nuclear arms, uh, is, is not what it once was, uh, really puts, uh, uh, I, this is one thing I don't think Vladimir Putin ever thought uh, they would see. It puts Russia uh, in in serious jeopardy, even trying to negotiate international deals. Well, as you say, the military in Russia, you know, we didn't know what it was. Uh, we had suspicions, I guess, the U.S. intelligence had suspicions it wasn't all that it was cracked up to be. And certainly it's proven to be that and exposes, I think, terribly for Putin of the weakness that he really of, of what he controls other than as you say the uh, the gas station and a few sort of uh, rare minerals it's uh it's, it's it's 
It's amazing what uh, what three months in a war uh, can do uh, and, and what it shows you. Well, let's move back here to Connecticut. Uh, uh, Johanna Ace, she, uh, she survived uh, almost a million dollars in outside money coming into Connecticut to defeat her. Uh, she survived by 1,800 votes. Um, but... Uh, and Republicans aren't the only one that put money into 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 defeating uh, Democratic candidates. Uh, the Democratic National Committee did did the same thing with. with but it's amazing. It shows how the power uh, of the vote is. Here we are sitting in Connecticut uh, with uh, John Hayes, and you know what? Uh, it's it, it turned out to be an incredibly important seat. They all became important, but they targeted her as a, as a place they could flip, and they and they almost did. Not quite. Uh, it was fascinating to see the money pouring in, and the fact that there was a holdup on the vote. I reading the uh, account from the, the NPR in Connecticut, there was some problem with the votes in Salisbury. <laughs> you know, it's. I was. I, I I laughed when I saw that story because one year there was a there was a a, a board of a education election. And uh, when they opened up the machines, this is when they had actual machines, folks. Uh, they opened up, there were two machines. There was a machine and a backup machine. They opened the machines, and all the paper was just mangled. <laughs> uh. I I remember that. It, it was years ago, back when, like I said, when it was just manual machines. Uh, but uh, that was that was an incredible time. So, uh, yeah, we'll have to see uh, and dig deeper into it and see what happened in Salisbury. But, well, anyway, we're done with the election season, and, except for Georgia. And, right. And it was nice to see, I think, across the country, very few uh, spurious claims about uh, the election being stolen or being rigged or mules dumping votes for Democrats. And the, there was none of that. And the other thing that came out, there were 10... Uh, Ten uh, people who control votes in in different states um, that that were uh, election deniers. Uh, only two of them won. Uh, the other ones uh, all lost. Uh, and that is a good sign that maybe uh, some civility and normality is returning into the minds of uh, of people. It does restore your faith uh, in America. Yeah. Uh, the the average guy saw through a lot of this noise. Pretty amazing. Well, we'll have to see what happens in Georgia. Do you think that it will re- you'll follow the re- it'll follow the repeat what happened in two thousand twenty? I don't think it, be, it can be predicted. Uh, certainly, people in Georgia have uh, campaign fatigue. You know, nothing that they they can't watch TV without seeing just ad after ad and tough ads and attack ads. Uh, they get tired of it. I think they've got to figure out a better strategy than to keep attacking one another. Well, it's going to be interesting. All I know is the uh, public media owners uh, of all the uh, non of all the pro- for-profit making radio stations and TV stations are going to have a bonanza over the next two weeks. <laughs> right, and I think it'll be interesting already the talk that uh, Herschel Walker uh, wants uh, DeSantis to campaign for him, but maybe not Trump. <laughs> Pretty amazing. All right, uh, we'll see what happens in the next week, but uh, there's never a dull moment, Brian. Without a doubt, and it's always great to come on here and talk with you every Thursday morning. All right. Take care, Brian. We'll speak to you next week. You bet. Bye-bye. Uh, that is uh, Brian Ross. Uh, once again, real news here on Robin Hood Radio. You can find Brian at uh, RobinHoodRadio.com. Click on On Demand. Click on Real News with Brian Ross.